To reset the sensor, just rotate the switch to reset and briefly press the plus or minus button. You'll see the red F LED light up. Set the rotary switch back to run mode and you're done. Note that this resets the sensor to high res mode with a rising characteristic with the voltage and current increase with range, full range operation, and the filter function turned off. The output type, current or voltage, is not changed by this reset function. You can turn the laser light on or off using pin 5, and you can change the polarity of that input. Just set the rotary switch to this RXD LA mode position, and to change the polarity, you just press the plus and the minus buttons to get the LEDs to look like this. Basically, when the ULED is on, the laser turns off at 24 volts. When the ILED is lit, 0 volts turns the laser off. Be sure to switch the rotary switch back to run mode when you're done. To switch between current and voltage output modes, set the rotary switch to the UI mode. The red F LED lights up. If the U LED is yellow, you're in voltage mode, 0 to 10 volts. If the I LED lights up, well, you're in current mode, 4 to 20 milliamps. Press the plus and the minus buttons to change the modes and then switch back to run mode when you're done. These sensors default to a high resolution mode, but you can change that to a lower resolution to get a faster response time and therefore a faster sample rate if that's what you need. That makes sense because it takes the sensor longer to get more accurate results so it slows down the sample rate. If you don't need higher resolution, then as you can see here, this option can cut the response time in half or even better, which doubles the sample rate. That's pretty good. Let's put this resolution into perspective. A standard playing card is about 280 micrometers thick. In high res mode, these sensors can resolve thicknesses down to these levels. And in low res, or high speed mode, the resolution is more like this. To switch modes, just rotate the dial to res slash speed mode. The F light should be red. If the U is lit, we're in high speed mode. If the I is lit, we're in high res mode. Just press the plus and the minus buttons to switch between the two and then turn the dial back to run mode when you're done. Each of these sensors has a different range of distances that it operates over. I'm using the 2005 for this video and its normal full range is 50 to 350 millimeters or roughly 2 to 14 inches. You have three ways you can modify this. In the first mode, you can only change the minimum range. The max range will default to whatever the max of the sensor is. And this mode will always use a rising slope with the current or voltage increasing with distance. To do this one, rotate the switch to teach, then place an object at the nearest distance you want to start detecting things at. And then press and hold the minus button until both LEDs light up. Rotate the switch back to run, you're ready to go. In this mode, you can change both the min and the max distances so that increasing range gives you an increasing output. To do this one, rotate the switch to teach, the red F light should light up, and then you place an object at the most distant range and press the plus button. And to confirm that that was recorded, the I LED lights up. Now you place that object at the nearest distance you want to measure and press the minus button. Now both LEDs should be lit. Now if both LEDs don't light up, that means that either the two set points were too close together or one of them was out of range or something like that. If that happens, just repeat this step. Move the nearest object so that it's in range or it's not too close to the other one and press the minus again. You set this one up the same way we just set the last one up, except the buttons and the LEDs are reversed. Let's try it. Rotate the switch to teach. The red should light up. Place an object at the most distant range again, but this time you press the minus button and you'll see the U LED light up. Remember for the previous one, it was the I LED. Now move the object to the nearest point and press the plus button this time, and both LEDs should light up. Just like the previous one, if both LEDs are not lit, then just repeat this step once you've got the nearest point readjusted. Note that these three sensors use class 1 lasers, and these three sensors use class 2 lasers. The class 2 lasers can resolve the accuracy quicker, which gets you roughly a 50% improvement in sample rate. The class 2 lasers come with the appropriate safety labels, so please be sure to use those. If you have a target with a glossy surface, especially a dark glossy surface like a black lacquer finish for example, then be sure to mount the sensor about 5 degrees off axis to prevent direct reflections. These sensors use an angle measurement technique to determine the distance and a strong reflection can interfere with that. And don't forget, Automation Direct's tech support is free during normal business hours using the phone, email, or even live chat. And don't forget to check out the forums, that's another great way to get help. 
Automation Direct offers Wengler distance measuring sensors all the way out to 100 meters. Check out the other videos in this series to learn how to set up the other Wengler distance measuring devices.